On our last episode, we successfully installed the Trailer Saver BD3 hitch by Hensley into the bed of the truck. And we pointed out what we learned and some tips and tricks should you decide to install this hitch for your RV needs. In this episode, we'll take the RV for a ride using the BD3 along the same route as the Blue Ox hitch, continuing to use the accelerometer in order to measure the amount of movement. Denver and Annie sure would enjoy having you come along, so remember to subscribe, like, and ring that bell. Okay, hitch is finally hooked up. We're taking it out for a test drive. What's the name of the hitch? The Hensley Trailer Saver. That's right. BD3 in our case. And um, I was able to get it all in by myself once I realized how to get the top, <laughs> the top, uh, the top unit off. So I've uh, got the uh, accelerometer running on the laptop in the uh, in the rig. All right, so let me turn the camera around and get Tina in here as well. So uh, here's the first run for us. With the new for hitch? The, yep, for the BD3. And um, I right. already noticed just going down the street that it was quieter. Yes. The hitch is quieter. There's a lot of clunking, and I can show you on the, on the, on the uh, Blue Ox where there's just play in the upright post. Um, so I'm sure that's probably what we were hearing. Yeah. So, so far, so good. Uh, we're going to take the same route I did yesterday. Like I said, I've got the accelerometer running in the laptop in the rig. So, uh, hang tight. When we get to our big bumps, we'll jump back in. Okay. We are out of the, what would you call that? The industrial park. <laughs> industrial park. Yeah. And back on to State Road 62. And we're coming up on the train tracks that I mentioned earlier. Again, these tracks are not that bad, but I'm doing 55 miles an hour. And as we were talking off camera earlier, just the way out here, Tina's noticing that it feels like it's just floating more as we turn. And I think that's because the airbags are able to compress where the Blue Ox had the rigid rubber uh, spring compressions um, so I I've noticed just so far a difference in just the towing it, it seems like there's no play so here's the tracks wow that was a lot <laughs> that was different smooth, yeah. that was very smooth so we'll get back on the uh, on the we're going through another industrial park and then we're going to hit the uh, Interstate 265, and there are some pretty good sized bumps there, and we'll be uh, jumping back on then. All right, so now we're back on the second industrial park. There's way too many industrial parks around us. Yeah. Um, again, we were chit chatting along the way. One of the things that I've noticed from the driver's seat is that, and I may have mentioned this already, uh, the lack of additional movement in the hitch. And like I said, in the Blue Ox, the upright post where everything rested on, even though it had these, I've never seen them, but like these huge rubber grommets in the columns, I think um, they didn't absorb as much as the airbags can in the shocks. So as a driver so far, it's a lot different. Yeah, I think when you stopped and you took oh. off, it didn't seem to like have a lot of yeah cool coming down the like or... yeah coming down the highway as well uh we came to a stoplight and I had to make a really quick stop um and that felt hugely under control i mean that's hugely under control extremely under control i mean it, even though the blue ox never made me feel out of control but this i didn't feel all that clunking and stuff right. you know back and forth motion that uh, that's just that little bit of slop that you have in the and that uh, movement of that those right. columns. And when you took off, it seemed to go. Yes, you, you don't. I'm not hearing a clunk, and then, right. then going forward, it's it's attached. Yeah. <laughs> the best way I can describe yeah. it. 
Um, I see, I, it feels a little better when I'm sitting here in the truck too. It doesn't seem as yeah. It seems a little bit smoother. Okay, so you, obviously we've driven. I mean now, what, almost twenty thousand miles mm -hmm. in the RV, um, and all, all we've had is the blue ox. Right. So um, that's all we can compare to. I do have the airbags installed about 50%. Now there's a little checking, but we're on these bad yeah, just a little bit. Well, they're not even bad, but no. I mean, you can't take the balance out of the truck. What we're trying to eliminate as much as possible is the, uh, the, the, the jarring action that's coming from the RV to the truck. Uh, truck and try to minimize that as much as possible. You'll never get it 100%. No. If you do, let me know. I'd like to know how it's done. All right, we're getting ready to get on the uh, Interstate 265, and we have a one of our big uh, bumps coming up. Yeah, let's see how we do. Let's see how we do. I'm just gonna keep recording. I hope there's no construction. They were working on the weekends. Looks like they're trying to pick up. Yeah. Be finished now. All right, first ramp. That's what I call them, the first ejection ramp. It's coming up and we are at 55. Here we go. Bounce, bounce, that, bounce. Not too bad, here goes the downside of it. Yeah. Whoa, that's a big bump. That was a big bump. <laughs> but it didn't seem to be, I mean, Yeah. it was bouncy, but not as bad. Bouncy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is true. Yeah. So, so nice it looks like we have a little bit of construction coming up. I got a car passing me because 60 to 55, I guess, is just not fast enough. All right. So it looks like we're open lanes. I will stay in the right hand lane like we did the last time. Yeah, that was mostly smoother too. And here's all these areas they've been yeah. fixing. Much smoother. I think my uh, rattling back there. You got a lot of stuff back there. I have a lot of stuff. I've been doing a lot of work. Love it's okay. It's just. What I've noticed after looking in my rearview mirror is that the cushioning effect, I think is what we're seeing, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> and I have the bags inflated at 50 pounds. Um, and that I actually had to lower it a little bit, had to let a little air out mm -hmm. to, uh, this may be something I had to dial in later. I may have to dial in. Dial it in. How, yeah. How low it needs to go. How low it needs to go. How low do you go? <laughs> All right, 60 miles an hour. Here we go over some of the uh, rougher ones. It sounds noisier though, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. It sounds a little noisier. I think it might be coming up too much. I think so too. I heard that. Yeah. Here's one of the bumps right here. Yeah, I heard the noise. Yeah. It sounds like something rattled, or something maybe there was something. I like think it, when it's it's sliding up and down those columns, it's it, the whole uh, assembly head is going up and down. It might be hitting the top. Yeah. So those are some big bumps, though. Those yeah, are some it huge sounded bumps. like like a metal on metal kind of like clank, again clank clank 
Yeah, I think it's the um, the main bar. It's going up and down the shafts. And when it's bouncing up, I think it's hitting, maybe hitting the uh, the top rail. And you, are you able to adjust that? It, I have a little more air pressure out. All right, so we are a halfway point. We just turned around. Uh, we were talking again off camera. Um, those bumps are huge. Um, I don't know, I'll have to look and see, but I think what was happening was that the head, is what I'm gonna call it, uh, right as up and down that shaft, and I think it was hitting the top side. And these are huge bumps. I've seen cars almost get launched. Um, Indiana needs to fix that. But, as of right now, it's smooth. It's very smooth. Yeah. Even the stops. I've noticed the stops. The stops, the starts. Yeah. The starts seem really solid. It's not like you're, you know, just, you can tell there's no movement um, during the starts. And even stops them. We just stopped at a stoplight as we're turning around. And I went ahead and just like hit the brake a little harder right at the very end. And it was very smooth. Yeah, very gracefully stopping. So heading now eastbound on 265 at 65. Slow down 60. All right, there we go. 60 miles an hour. All right, here comes the big one. This is the worst one of them all. Hey, I need to break in here real quick to explain something about this section of the video and why there is no data on the accelerometer. So, as we're heading eastbound on 265 and we're hitting the two big bumps, and they are big and they are really, really disruptive to the vehicle and to the RV, but the accelerometer samples data like every two seconds or every five seconds. So it's not a continuous stream of data going to the accelerometer. It takes samples, 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 and it combines it into a single file that I can display as a graph. So either two things have happened. One, it missed the sample cycle for both bumps, which I don't think would have happened, or the BD3 didn't translate that motion uh, into the RV as much as we think it did. So even though we were hearing a lot of jarring around and it looks like we were really bumping around and you could see the RV moving, it, it, it may not have translated all that energy up into the RV, which is a good thing. So I want to explain that real quick because I went through these files several times and I would look and pinpoint where we were in, in the drive uh, on the uh, accelerometer graph and I could not find those two big bumps. So I wanted to explain that to you real quick and they give you uh, an explanation as to why you did not see a graph. Now I'm going to go ahead and give you guys all these uh, accelerometer uh, video clips. I'll put a link down below how you can get those and you can review them in their entirety if you wish. It's not exciting data. So anyway, uh, back to the video. And it wasn't fixed yet, <laughs> so, um, okay. I don't hear the clinking. Yeah, so I think, I know I've been doing a lot of thinking on this, <laughs> this little John. journey, yeah. Uh, I think it's gonna take a little tweaking on the airbag pressures. In this case, it might need to come down a little bit. Um, I thought, I may have to ask Hensley what they recommend, uh, especially if I think I'm hitting the top side of the support shaft. And they may say, yeah, lower your pressures. Lower your pressures. Lower your pressures. All right, so now we're back at exit 11 on 265 eastbound, coming up on the last of the bad bumps. You can actually see skid marks on the, on yeah. the road. Oh my gosh, they're bad. 
<laughs> and here's the downside to it. So I think we were talking again off, off camera. Um, we think the clunking we're hearing is the uh, shaft, the whole head coming up and hitting up against the top side. Thunk, thunk. Not, the, not the top side of the, it's not the top side of the camper. Oh no 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 yeah. the the um, clear by that. <laughs> yeah no no the the um, the receiver head I'll have to call it um, rise up and down the shaft as you've seen in the video so far that it might be coming up. So I'm going to reach out to Trailer Saver and ask them what they recommend. Or if anybody has any comments, maybe they might know. Yeah, or if you're watching this video and, and you've got the same BD3, maybe even the BD5 and having the same issue, uh, you know, let me know. Heck, they may say put more weight on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like I know saying. nothing about hitches, so. Well, we got hitched. That's true, we did get hitched a long, long time ago. <laughs> I don't know. I'm scared from one to ten so far about the ride. Just as a as a rider, uh, I never like to get number scales. Never accurate at it. So. <laughs> but what would you think? I, I mean, I'm pretty pleased with it so far. It's been very smooth. So it has been a lot smoother. Know. And this is on some very very rough roads. Um, that you know, they're working on them. I think they've recognized their problems. When you see skid marks on you know joints in the in the road where they're so bad you know they're pretty, pretty rough <laughs>